Hi everyone, it's Dragana from Sasebo. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. This is the update video of making your own homemade jelly plate. It's been 10 months and a few days since I've made my jelly plate originally. There's a video with the recipe, I will link it down below. But this is the update video. This is 10 months after I made the jelly plate. Since then, I melted it down twice and reset it again simply because I had a tear and I used some sharp tools and my prints were not coming out really nicely. It's been probably about four months or five months since I've done it last time and I haven't really used it all that much. I used it the other day. You can still see there's some paint here. I'll just take it out. There it is. It changed the color a little bit but as you can see the sharp tools that I used left markings on my plate so I don't like that showing up when I'm printing. My plate became smaller and it is a little bit thinner but it's still quite all right. Let's have a look. It's still about three quarters of an inch. With the small one it's the same thing. You see it is smaller than it was but it's not that bad you know although it, it, i was getting smaller prints <laughs> for a while i've been putting off doing this because i wanted to see if the mold is going to catch it it's the start of the summer here so i thought i better remelt it now and i might as well record the whole process so that you can see how it's done so this would be the third time i'm doing this i think it's the third time I've lost count that I should have written down. So each time I added this again, just in case, this is the preservative that's normally added to um, pickled foods to prevent mold. It's E211. So every time I remelted my jelly plate, I added one packet of this. This is seven grams. And it obviously worked. I didn't use alcohol. I used water, gelatin and glycerin. You can find the recipe in the original video. Today I want to show you how you can refresh your gel plate. It becomes a little bit damaged over time. It shrinks. You don't need to throw away these plates. They are still okay. You can melt it down and set it again. It will be like new. And this is how we do it. First of all, you have to figure out how much water has evaporated. I assume it's water. I can see here that about one quarter of an inch in thickness has been lost. And same here. Can you see that? It was all the way up to there. It's about a quarter of an inch thinner. And we've lost about half an inch on all sides so we need to replace that water if we want to have the same size or you don't have to if you want your plate to be firmer you can just melt this as it is and it will be a little bit thinner but it's going to be firmer one way of finding out how much water you need to add is to actually pour water on top of this until it gets to there where it was originally so i'm just going to do that i just have some plain tap water I put about a liter here and then I'll just subtract and I'll know how much I need to add. So this is the water that evaporated. Okay, so as you can see, it's quite a lot. All right, and also in this one. Yeah, I'll just check now here. My water was up to one liter mark. And now it is half a liter. So half a liter of water. What is half a liter? It's about two cups of water that I will need to add to my jelly plate when I decide to remelt it. One more thing I wanted to add in case you're wondering where to keep your jelly plate once you make it. I've been keeping it in this tray. All right. So every time I finish using it, I will clean it up with some wet wipes and I would put it back into this tray and I put a cardboard just a cardboard on top to prevent dust from falling inside. And during warmer months, it's best if you can keep it in a cooler place. If your house is very warm, keep it in the fridge. But in the winter, it's all right. As long as it's not really close to the heat source or sunlight. I'm thinking now after I set it, 
because the summer is coming i might have to put it in the fridge again at least during the summer months when it's really warm in the house okay let's set this up so we figured out that we need half a liter of water all right i won't use this water i'll just wash this a little bit like that i will add clean water but at least now i know that i need about half a liter of water i'm going to use this hot plate you can do this on your kitchen stove it's basically the same setup as the first time around you get a larger pot and you fill it about one third of water just plain tap water and you turn the heat on then you take the second pot that is smaller than the first one you leave it empty and this is where you're going to pour the water first and we figured out we need half a liter of water all right now you take your plates i'll take the small one first i'll just remove that water take your gel plates you can tear it or you can just use scissors and you just chop it up into smaller pieces like that Oops. I'm going to strain this water still got some acrylic paint on it that's all right because we are going to strain it before we put it back look how they, they've got different colors you see this is the reason i need to reset it because i use some circle stamps and i actually kind of press too hard and i put it down there so i'm just going to Put all of that there. But I'm so happy that it didn't get any mold. That is so good. I can't really tell you whether the glycerin and no alcohol combination or that preservative helped prevent the mold or maybe both. But it doesn't really matter. What matters is that it didn't get moldy. I'm so excited to use it again. I've been dying to make some leaf prints. With the preservative, we will add it at the very end once everything is melted just like we did the first time all right so while this is heating up i'll put it to medium heat i don't want it boiling just medium heat i'm gonna go quickly and wash this i really want to wash it properly and this one as well another thing you want to do while this is melting to have it ready is to open up this you see it's like little granules that's what it looks like and I'm just going to just cover that with a little bit of water, just like that. And I'm going to let it sit until it dissolves. All right, I'll just quickly go and wash my trays and I will be back. I wash the tray with just plain hot water, no detergents. And I use a really soft cloth to help it uh, kind of to help take away the little bits of gelatin that was stuck on the side so i didn't use any abrasive detergents or anything just hot water and i'm just wiping it with a soft cloth you don't really want to scratch this okay so now that is ready for the new plate okay i'll put it here 
and if you watched my first video uh, you'll know that one of the plates i made the small one was set inside of this ashtray i remelted that when i was doing remelting the first time because i didn't really use it and i didn't really <laughs> like it to be honest so i just remelted that so i don't have it to show you i've been using only this one and the large one okay let's see how is this going it is melting slowly this might take i don't know maybe 15 minutes because you don't want it boiling you don't want the water underneath really boiling oops You just want it to melt gradually so while it is melting it's a good idea to prepare a sieve that you want to use because as you can see there's bits of paint and probably dust and god knows what paper <laughs> so you don't want that in your in your new plate actually old new plate so i usually just once this is melt melted completely when i decide to put it back into the tray I do it through this so you yeah, just keep an eye on this stirring gently occasionally and yeah the pieces are getting smaller as you can see I haven't really used it for a few months and then uh, I tried using it only the other day and then I noticed that I had those scratches and marks and I thought yeah it's perfect timing because I really wanted to do this follow-up video for everyone to know if it lasted this long and it did and I'm so happy. Still needs a little bit more time. They are starting to dissolve too. The water should become clear. I would put this inside only once this is ready and that's completely dissolved. I'm thinking what sort of prints should we make tomorrow when we try to use it? Because I will have to leave it to set overnight, 24 hours, before I can show you the result. And then we're going to use it. We'll test it, make some prints. This looks good, looks promising. In the original recipe, I think I used one liter of water. And after 10 months and remelting it twice, I had to replace half a liter of water. So it did lose quite a bit. I think when I was remelting, my plate first and second time I only added about half a cup of water each time because um, it didn't evaporate as much but now because it's been quite a few months since I've done it I guess it evaporated even more this is really an experiment I wonder how long is this one going to last before I really have to throw it in the bin I think this is melted now, but I can still see a few little, yeah. yeah, just a little bit more. Let's see, how is this doing? I'm just doing this so it dissolves quicker. I'll reduce the heat. Because the, the water in the first pot is quite hot and there's no need for this to be heated any anymore. What I like about this homemade jelly plate is that it smells neutral it doesn't have any smell actually 
while the store-bought one has this really strong synthetic smell that they tried to mask with a, some sort of scent and it really makes me nauseous sometimes. <laughs> so I prefer this one that does that's kind of neutral. But if you wanted to have your jelly plate scented, you can always add some essential oils, just a few drops of lavender perhaps or some tea tree whatever scent you prefer I think that would be okay all right I think this is good enough there's a bit of fluff there and I don't think it's from the preservative it's probably something that was in this dish but I'm gonna put this inside regardless and since I'm planning to strain this as you can see let me just grab a spoon this a little particles probably dried up acrylic paint dust pieces of paper who knows so my preservative is dissolved and i'm going to put this inside and now i have to mix that up again make sure it's kind of everywhere while the whole thing is still warm I think that's it so I'm turning the heat off and I'm going to take this out. I don't need this anymore. I'm just going to place that maybe here. would be wise to do the small one first and then put everything else in the big one so I'm going to do this one first That one is done. Now we do this one. It's kind of hard to do this with one hand. Some dust particles are still there. I can see there's quite a bit of paint particles left and what I don't like is the fact that they've settled down on the bottom of the plate because when I print I will take this and turn it upside down to do the prints and I really don't like the fact that those particles are at the bottom so I'm going to strain it once more. The holes here are too big and I really want to strain that so I'm gonna take some cheesecloth fold it like this in full I think that should do it so I'm just going to pull back everything inside of this pot and I wash the pot okay I washed it in hot water just making sure you see this and now I'm going to put it back maybe this one isn't that bad but I don't want to risk it so I'm just going to put it back through the sieve and this one as well
you can see how much paint there is there those white bits i don't want that especially not at the bottom okay i think it's much clearer now and i don't know if you can see this but it caught all the little bits of paint so it worked much better if your sieve is not fine enough just use some cheesecloth okay i wash these again and i think this looks much better now so i'm going to just pour it directly i don't need to strain anymore don't want this bubble so I'm just going to do that so this one is done All right, let's do this big one so that's how you fix it I'm glad it happened so that I can show you how you can fix it in, if it happens to you a few bubbles don't want bubbles I think it looks alright now as you can see a lot less particles there's still some really fine ones I can see like almost like white dust but that's that's all right it's nothing to worry about it should be all right all right so now i'm going to leave this inside of the fridge for 24 hours and i will come back tomorrow and we can see together what it looks like if it worked or if it didn't work and then we'll do some prints as well all right so see you in 24 hours it's been 24 hours approximately and i think the plate is firm enough for me to take it out of the tray I just want to show you this. I have this glass here that is from an old picture frame and I simply put some masking tape around to avoid cutting myself on the sharp edges and I do it because the gel plate sticks really well onto the glass and then when you're working it's not going to move okay and the glass is heavy enough so it's not going to move either if you just put on a piece of plastic or something it will keep doing this when you apply the paint and that can be really annoying all right so now how do we do this i'm going to remove my rings first because i don't want to accidentally scratch the plate and i'm going to have this knife ready because sometimes this happens easily and sometimes you just have to start it okay this one is all right i guess hope you can see so i'm just gently pulling like this the same way as we did in the first part of the video see how it's peeling off the sides of that tray so I didn't have to use the knife, but if this doesn't want to happen, you would just run your knife, really sharp one, along one edge just to start it. And then you do this. Okay, now it's the tricky part. You want it to come out so you can tilt it a little bit and you still keep pulling. it is it's looking a lovely smooth finish back to its normal size clear no bits and pieces inside and ready to be used again and i'm hoping it's going to last for a few more months okay i'll put it back inside of the tray and i would keep it like that inside of that tray put a cardstock or something on top i wouldn't put 
a glad wrap or something that will stop the airflow completely because I'm scared the stale air inside might cause it to form mold. So usually something like just cardstock or cardboard on top loosely. Okay, now let's do the big one. So we do the same. We start by gently pulling on one side. So you make sure your, your, your fingers stick to the plate and then you pull and that's what happens. Okay. This part is really important because usually breaks happen when you try to get it out for the first time. So you can't force it, you have to be gentle with it. Okay, so just go around, make sure it's all unglued completely before you try to take it out. And of course, in time, in a couple of months or so, the, the plate is going to become smaller, but that's fine. If that happens, you just repeat this process. So this will be the third time I'm doing this, I think. And I'm still using the same ingredients. I'm just adding water and that preservative. Okay, so I've unstuck the side. So I'm gently going to pull it out. Okay, I have to put this aside. Nice. I'm very happy with it. Very happy. Smooth, no bits and pieces, so I think we've done a good job. I'm just gonna try and lift it like this so that you can see. And the air pockets that you see, it's from the underside. And this is going to become smaller and firmer in time, but that is fine. Okay, what do we say? We test it now. Let's just do some prints. I have my sprayer here. It's a bit dirty, but that's all right. I have a piece of acetate that I use as a palette because I like to mix the colors here before I put them on the gel plate. Otherwise, I end up with splotches of color that I don't really like. And I've got some scrap paper here. I also have some acrylic paints here. I actually need some of the collage papers for my next project. So I'm going to start with just a few in one color. And for those, I will use the papers that don't have that much. Okay, I'm going to use that one. So I'm just going to get some blue. Three different shades of blue. So I'm going to start with just one color. I find that with gel printing, when you first take it out, and you want to do the first print it's never perfect so um yeah it needs to be kind of broken <laughs> that's the, the right word you need to do a few more warm-up prints before you can actually start working i don't know what's the reason for it but i find that's the case okay we have some glue here Let's do a few more. And I'm going to add some black. Want a bit of darker color. 
color. I find that homemade jelly plate needs a little bit more paint on the plate compared to the store-bought one. Okay, have another dark background. Okay, now let's do one just black. I want to get some collage papers going on because I want to do some collages and I think the black would look really good for that purpose, especially with text and some other markings. So now the third print, I can see that the paint is finally kind of looking good. So let's do some stencils, some with these. So with stencils, uh, if they have letters or numbers, you need to turn them the other way around. Okay. Wow. Okay, what about this for a stencil? <laughs> it's from that sketch pad. All right, let's grab any of these. Some paper. to get two prints out of this the first time I'll pick up the negative and then I'll pick what's left and these papers that are left over after working with rust and paint are perfect you, know, you just add something else to it and it looks as if you meant to do it like that Wow, I love this. So this is a perfect collage paper for your project. You know, it's thin. It's got some colors happening, mainly white, but it's got some rust and all of that. And just some black paint on top. So I'd say my jelly plate is working just fine. We can do one more out of this. Let's use it on a really... It's going to be more like a ghost print, but that's all right. Yeah, I think it's still all right. Now let's remove this. You can also press that onto a piece of paper and perhaps take the paint out of the stencil. I don't have room to do it now, <laughs> so you wouldn't be able to see it. So I'm just going to take it off and take this bit off. And that's now painted in black. Perfect. You can use that as well. All right, let's pick that up. I like this one with lots of colors. Okay. Gorgeous. I love it. So conclusion is my gel plate is working just fine even after I remelted it three times and it's as good as new now. I suspect this one is the same. I won't be doing that now. We'll leave that for another episode but we'll just do lots of prints. 
Okay, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy this and I hope you find value in, in this video. If you've ever planned to do homemade jelly plate, there is a way and it will last you a while. So I've had this one for 10 months now and I have a feeling it's going to last me a few more. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and I hope I see you soon in my next video. Bye for now.